Hi, welcome back to my channel for returning users and welcome to my channel for first time users. I'm Dr. D. And this particular video playlist, we're going to talk about the Michael Porter's classic article, What is Strategy in Harvard Business Review? And here's the article itself. And you're probably thinking, like, what's going on with the highlighter? And if you go on Google Scholar, this is a version of the article that I found. And whoever read this, like, just went absolutely ballistic with the highlighter um, on this first page. And then they've kind of highlighted. You know, in the article throughout, my students tend to like these pre-highlighted articles, so I'm going to use that for this particular um, discussion. So this is a real classic in the field of strategy. Um, I think that you know, MBA students, definitely consultants, anywhere you go will have read this, as will most undergraduate students. Now, those of you that have taken my other classes with me, or maybe you've been following along some of the other YouTube videos, are going to notice that this particular um, article is not really an academic article. It's in Harvard Business Review, so there's a, you know, not a lot of dense citations, not a lot of academic jargon. The audience for anything written in Harvard Business Review is practitioners, MBA students, executives, not acad academicians for the most part. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier to read. Now again, Harvard Business Review markets itself as, you know, designed to be read by executives everywhere you go. As many consulting projects as I've been on, I've never met an executive who leisurely reads Harvard Business Review. Um, however, I'd be curious to hear from my viewers. Do you read Harvard Business Review for fun or for professional enrichment? If so, let me know a little bit more about that in the comments. Um, just because I haven't met any executives that read it doesn't mean nobody reads it. Obviously, um, there are, is quite a large audience for it because you find it in libraries and bookstores pretty much everywhere you go. Even my own university keeps a subscription to Harvard Business Review. And of course, the rival to Harvard Business Review is MIT Sloan uh, Review uh, because you know MIT has to be just as good as Harvard, right? So that's kind of uh, the background of Harvard Business Review. But this is a real classic. And so what I'm going to do is, as part of this introduction, I'm going to talk about some of the basic ideas in this article and then tell you where you can find some of those basic ideas throughout this playlist. So if we look at the very first page of this article, it's got my, a nice little executive summary on there um, to kind of get you oriented. And it talks about something interesting. It says, strategy is the creation of a unique and valuable position involving a different set of activities. Now, those of you that have been following my class and watching some of my other YouTube uh, videos know that the definition that I try to put forth to everyone that I think everybody agrees on is that strategy is the pursuit of competitive advantage. You know, there's hundreds of definitions of strategy out there, but I think one that everybody agrees on, strategy is the pursuit of competitive advantage. And that's kind of implied here because he says, strategy is the creation of a unique and valuable position. We're going to talk about that in the video, strategy as being different. But he adds a little bit of a twist to it. He says, involving a different set of activities. Okay? So that goes into this whole discussion of fit and sustainability. So pursuit of competitive advantage, you know, strategies being different, got it. You know, this whole thing with strategic positions, these are different ways to pursue competitive advantage. Okay, that's, you know, you find that pretty mainstream stuff. But the real twist here is this whole discussion of fit. You know, involving this different set of activities. And I've always thought that this is Michael Porter's response to the popularity of Jay Barney's resource-based view of strategy, which builds not on Porterian rents, but on Ricardian rents. And we're going to talk a lot more about that um, in this video on fit and sustainability. Okay? Michael Porter also says that strategy requires you to make trade-offs in competing and choosing what not to do. In order to you know, facilitate that discussion of trade-offs, we're going to look at the production possibilities curve or production possibilities frontier, which you've all seen in your, you know, basically any undergraduate or high school economics class, but we're going to do a little bit of refresh on that. And then we're going to explain how operational effectiveness and efficiency, what that is, and how that's different from strategy. These are two very different ways of looking at problems. And then once again, the third point, strategy involves creating a fit among a company's activities. We're going to actually dive into fit and look at how by recombining a company's internal activities, you can create new markets. That's a real contribution that Michael Porter is taking. But again, it's interesting that Jay Barney had been doing this a little bit while before. And I feel like Porter is answering Jay Barney, but he's not directly addressing him in this particular article. Uh, I, I can't exactly 
tell you why. But again, so that's kind of wrapping up this introductory video. As I mentioned, the next video we're going to talk about the production possibilities curve or the production possibilities frontier and how that relates to trade-offs and what those trade-offs look like. We'll talk about operational uh, efficiency or operational effectiveness, depending on which body of literature uh, you cite. We'll talk about how strategy is different from OE, operational effectiveness. Then we'll look at, you know, okay, it's great to be different in strategy, but exactly how can you be different? How can you pursue that competitive advantage? And that's where we start looking at the strategic positions. We're going to talk about variety-based position, needs-based position, access-based position. And then we'll start getting into Michael Porter's real contribution here, and that's when he talks about fit. And fit, again, is how you, you know, align the internal activities of a company to ideally penetrate new markets or create new markets. Whereas these strategic positions are basically looking at how do you beat the competition. So this is exogenous or externally looking, and the fit is internally or endogenously oriented. So we'll talk about fit as simple consistency. We'll look at reinforcing activities, optimization of effort. And then we'll look at fit and sustainability, and that's sustainability of competitive advantage. And we'll talk about Portarian versus resource-based view strategy or Portarian versus Ricardian rents. And then he has this little dangling thing at the end of it, like rediscovering strategy, the failure to choose, and the role of leadership. And I'll talk about that a little bit too. Throughout this particular playlist, you'll get some of my own commentary and kind of some of the, the findings of this particular article and some of the strong points I think of this article as well as some of its weaknesses. But of course, as always, if you have your own viewpoints on this particular article, make sure you put them in the comments below. I really enjoy hearing from both my students and my YouTube audience. And as always, as I'm wrapping up this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. That's a like for this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, definitely do. Um, I am a starving YouTube creator. And I am looking forward to seeing you in the next video.